Hello everybody, my name is CapGuy378 and welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. We just saw Katori naked in the bath in the last video. Let's see what happens now. After that, Katori calmly got into the bath with Kanako. Kanako also made sure not to meddle unnecessarily and was very considerate towards Katori to help her calm down. While I was doing the dorm mother's jobs in the kitchen, Katori had gotten out of the bath and came to see me. She looked pretty embarrassed. Oh, whew, I thought she was gonna yell at me or something. Well, I... Uh, never mind. I stopped myself from saying something like, that's another one of the dorm mother's jobs. The reason why I did that just now was not because I'm the dorm mother. A little bit. I heard, I heard the splashy splash. No, that's not the issue. Um, I didn't know how to answer and Katori left me behind and went back to her room. Maybe it just wasn't, you know, built. Uh, for or modified uh, for Katori yet. Not sure. Mosimosi, Monetta? Nandemonai, no, I cannot, they know you. Oh, no, 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 uh oh, is she actually gonna drop out? No, don't drop out. Uh oh. Send the little wings which fly in the sky highly. What did? Leave it to me. At Agaha's signal, I ran ahead to block the cat's escape route. Why are we catching a tortoise shell cat? Agaha and I blocked the stray cat's path in its search for a third route. And there was... There was Katori as she made an almost sickeningly cheerful smile. Now that's how to talk to a cat. Katori dangles an anchovy, which captivates the cat. <laughs> However, as expected of a stray cat, it won't let down its guard so easily. Oh, the secret weapon! Katori nods and takes out a small fishing rod. What? An anchovy hangs on the end of the line. <laughs> oh. Ure, ure. Dango, dango. <laughs> Just like a blessing descending from heaven, the anchovy draws the stray cat's attention. With Katori's skillful waving of the rod, she was almost literally reeling the cat towards her with the anchovy. Oide, oide. <laughs> As the cat reaches out its paw, Katori times the pulling away of the anchovy so that the cat cannot reach it. It really was a little bit mean. Yeah, tad bit. Eventually, the cat, running out of patience, used its last resort. Jump! The cat jumped up onto Katori's lap all by itself. Oh. Why has rabies? Careful. Hmm. Amazingly, the cat settled into Katori's arms. Oh. Okay, that that's that's good. Yosha! Saksen Tai Seiko! Can't believe it fell for such a stupid plan. Felt like saying, come on, stray cat, you can do better than that. So we're helping. <laughs> So 
we're helping Katori now with her uh, list thingy. Katori shows a sight that we'd never seen before and smiles affectionately while stroking the cat. The cat seems like it doesn't really enjoy being stroked, but he's too, con too focused on the large amount of anchovies to run away. I like that emblem on their uh, their vests or shirts or whatever that is. I guess start stroking him too. Oh, girls like cats. Is it okay if I stroke him too? Hmm, but I like cats too. This seems a bit unfair. Next is... I open the notebook to check. How do we get to uh, helping K Katori now? Was because I saw Katori naked and then she's... Now just like, oh well, oh well, whatever. He saw everything, I'll just let everything out. Things I want to do. It's a list of bullet points that Katori has written in her notebook. We are now in the middle of clearing Katori's list of things she still has left to do. As Agaha and I look at the notebook, Katori looks at us sideways, but not with suspicion. How did this situation occur? That's what I want to know. To answer that, we need to go back to this morning. Oh, then let's do that. Because I'm confused as to what happened. This morning, I was ambivalent as to whether or not I should return the withdrawal notice that I picked up to its rightful owner. Of course, you should typically return lost items back to the owner, but if I had done that, then Katori would leave the dorm, so I kept it. If that's what she wants to do, then I have no right to stop her, but I was still hesitant for some reason. So, I was pacing back and forth along the hallway until... Katori, was, who was wearing her uniform, poked her head out from her room. She was furtively checking the situation outside. As her eyes meet, she slams the door shut. Why is she acting so suspiciously? Tori's always doing something suspicious, but there is definitely something behind her behavior just now. I concealed myself in the dining hall for a while. I wait 10 minutes. Pat appears from the little door at the bottom of Katori's bedroom door. Pat took a look around the entranceway, then came into the dining hall. What? Uh, Pat is so adorable. Hato. Shh. Or do a sneak attack. Hato goes back to Katori's room. Mm, not sure if Katori really knows how to speak, uh, speak duck, but... Okay. Yes. What does she mean by alright? Katori came sneaking out of her room. She took a peek into the dining hall just to be safe. I hid behind the counter. When she says that guy, it feels like she's talking about me. Well, of course, you're the only guy here. Tori is wearing her uniform, but she isn't carrying her bag. In the entrance where she opens up her notebook and looks inside. I sneaked up behind her. Are you going to skip school again today? Tori jumped, let out a scream, and threw the notebook. That's why you should stop sending a duck to scout for you. As I pick up the notebook that she dropped, I look at the open page. Things I want to do. This is the page I saw before. Could it be that you're planning to do all of this before you quit school? Seems like I was spot on. 
やり残しを今日で全部終わらせるのもういいでしょ返して I handed back the notebook. Then I follow Katori as she is about to leave. What is it? I'm going to help. What? It must be tough by yourself, right? Katori looks at me like I'm an idiot. Duh, Aoi. While we stop in front of the door, the doorbell rings. Who could it be at this time? Oh, who would have thought? Agaha. What did you come here for? Agaha pulls me towards her and whispers into my ear. Yeah, whisper in my ear with that you know, that spooky face. So she came all the way here to ask Katori to go to school with her? That was a jumble of mess right at what I just said. So she came all the way here to ask Katori to go to school with her? Much better. Bozai! Majiska! Yeah, the truth is that... How should I explain this? Katori, I'm just gonna borrow your notebook. I go back to Katori and take the notebook. Kora! Uh, she didn't even fight me for it. <laughs> Using that, I explained the situation to Agaha. I explained that today she wants to finish the things I want to do list that is written in this notebook. I don't tell her about Katori's plan to quit school. Agaha groans a little as she looks at the list. So, that's Hooray! Friends helping friends! And that is how we got to here! That is how Aga and I ended up going with Katori, against their wishes to clear the things remaining on the list one by one. By the way, as far as us urgently searching for members with the club goes, last night we came up with a possible prospect. That's why we're going with Katori. But, but we have a prospect, said Katori while stroking the cat, but we don't listen. Is that the big doggy? Aga pointed in red. Stroke the head of the big dog in the neighborhood. It's really scary, but it might be unexpectedly friendly. If possible, I'd like to ride around on its back. Yes, it's that big dog. From the list. The Aito family are rich and have a well-known and very large dog called Pedigree that roams around freely in their garden. When we were kids, it was rare to see such big dogs, and we would often watch him lumbering around their spacious lawn. I'd like to ride around on its back? So far, I have lifted up Katori on two occasions. Both times, she was as light as a feather. Well, perhaps that's slightly exaggerating, but she really was light. Oh, okay, well, that explains why it's so big. Pedigree is a Saint Bernard. They're pretty huge. While seriously considering Katori's silly idea, we headed towards the Ido's house. <laughs> Said Agaha as she put the baggage down on the grass. Today is dry and sunny, and the temperature isn't that high. Oh, dry weather's the best. If it's humid, oh my gosh, it's the worst. It's quite high in the sunlight, but there is a nice breeze. Here, I throw a sports drink to Agaha. Oh, thank you. There's one for you too, Katori. 
Take some orange juice from the convenience store bag and pass it to Katori. Arigato. You want to sit down here? Aga, give me a hand, would you? Aga, who looks like she's enjoying her sports drink, gets up and comes over. I want to put you down here. I leave lifting up Katori to Agaha and tell her how to do it, while I give a hand from the side. Katori sits down on the grass and looks comfortable as she stretches her back. Seems that wheelchairs can get quite hot in the summer. Ooh, yay! In the next video, we'll see what lunches they are having. And if we get to ride the big doggy later. So everyone, thank you for watching this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe. That'd be so awesome of you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video, everybody. Goodbye!